What's up, YouTube? DDBK videos. I make military content, put it on the internet for you to enjoy. If you want my social media, like my Instagram is down below, go ahead and stalk me. I've had a lot of stalkers recently. One met up at my door, said he was my dad from like way, way in the past, and then my parents been lying to me. I was like, whoa, chill out. <laughs> I'll sign your forehead later, bucko. Wait in line with the rest of my fans. I've been off of YouTube for like three weeks, almost a month, and um, I wouldn't say I was doing anything important. I am moving, there's like a, a bunch of, I don't know, those are excuses, dude. I did not feel like setting up a camera and recording for YouTube. I think it's the editing part, really. <clears throat> You guys don't care about that. Today we're gonna to be talking about the best travel hints, tips, and tricks. That's right, I am full of them. While in the US Navy, this is gonna to apply to other branches, but mainly on the Navy because I can speak more intelligently on that. First and foremost, if your main goal is to travel when you join the Navy, which is tons of people's goal when they join the military is they wanna travel, see the world, they came from a small hometown. If you're in like some like backwoods type place in Alabama and you have a population of like 300 people, this video is for you, man. I'm gonna show you everything. If you have never left the US, highly recommend it. Uh, some of my favorite countries are uh, not here. <laughs> But just for temporary short periods of time because I love US of A, baby. <clears throat> if your goal is to travel, first thing you wanna do is immediately try to get orders to Europe. Europe is gonna be the prime destination. We have uh, Sigonella, Naples, Rota, Spain, um, some other European satellite uh, commands you can go to over there, whether that's sea or shore duty, pretty much for every rate. If you're a corpsman, you're in luck. There's actually multiple hospitals and clinics out there. So you can get stationed at the hospitals, clinics, or on a ship, whereas the other people have to find administrative billets outside their rating if they wanna to go to the hospital or go to a ship. So if you're a corpsman, you're more likely to be able to go to Europe. Actually, there's a ton of corpsmen, so that's actually a <laughs> Europe. <laughs> The reason you're gonna want Europe, and this is very important, while you're overseas, uh, you're gonna have lots of 72s and 96s. If you guys don't know what that is, a 72 is when there's like a day extra attached to a weekend that you don't have to work. So let's say if you have a 72 and you have Monday off, so that means at the end of Friday, the next day you have to muster at work is Tuesday. So you have a three day weekend. If you have a 96, you have a four day weekend. Tracking, good. You do not have to use your own personal leave to go ahead and travel. And in Europe, you can take a train to another country. If you have a passport, you can easily go from like Italy, Germany, Spain, whatever. It's all super cheap, short train rides. And if you wanna spend money, you could even fly over to make it faster. It's still extremely cheap. Why I'm saying to get Europe first is because those are harder orders to get than Japan. And Japan is where you're gonna to wanna to be stationed next so you can then travel around Asia. However, if you get Europe off the get-go, you are in a huge lead above your peers because what you can do is not spend leave the entire time while in Europe. <clears throat> you get 30 days a year because it's 2.5 days a month, right? So you get 30 days paid leave a year. You can suck that up the entire time you're in Europe, and then one, take a huge month to yourself pretty much right before you leave to really hit every end of Europe that you wanted to hit. If not, if you're getting orders back to the States after Europe, you, th you then can take like a month of leave just going to different miscellaneous countries you weren't able to easily satellite relocate while in Europe. Getting Japan orders is incredibly easy uh, because 7th Fleet is always locked down. There's always like conflicts between the locals. So still, Japan, if you wanna travel more than the US, right? Pick Japan over the US if you wanna travel. However, don't pick it over Europe. <clears throat> While you're in Japan, you're easily gonna be able to like jump around to like Guam, Hawaii. Uh, Australia's more down, but it's gonna be easier to get to Australia from there than from the US. Thailand, hands down, my favorite country to visit. That has been such a cool experience. I'm gonna remember with my friends for the rest of my life. I'm never gonna look at ping pongs or rats the same. However, <laughs> it was a good experience nonetheless. So obviously, you guys know, using your own leave days, you can go and take your own personal leave and pay for the flights. However, did you know you can get free flights? There's these thing called Mac flights, and um, each base is gonna have a different schedule, but if you're near an aviation base, they have these things called Mac flights, which are standby flights. So if the military is going to that country anyway, and they've opened spacing on this aircraft, you can actually get on for free. And sometimes you can bring your dependents on for free, which means if you plan out block leave, you know, two weeks, your command's cool with routing your short shit, and like a couple days notice, you could be like, hey, we have a spot open for Guam. Drop it to your command, they prove it. <clears throat> Hop over to Guam, hopefully there's a Mac flight back. If not, just pay the one way from Guam and you're good to go. You're still saving hundreds, actually probably thousands to go to Guam if you do a Mac flight. The second way for good travel is if you wanna travel home, there is this program, I'm forgetting what it's called, it's, it's like a, 
recruiter incentive thing. If you Google it, <laughs> I, I forgot what the exact program is called. However, once you're in the military on your first contract, you can actually go back to your hometown and work for your recruiter for five days and get the whole day off of, uh, or the whole week off of free leave. I went and did this and there was no work. He had me show up to like the high school once and show up to the dep, dep meeting once and like just talk to like the kids wanting to join and be like, yeah, it's been cool, rock on. And the rest of the week, I pretty much just had off to myself, but your recruiter, you're recruiting, assisting, whatever, and you get the week off, it's dope. The next one is to pee and then like, and the next one, which isn't a good uh, long-term solution. However, if you are stationed at your hometown anyway, if you're stationed in the same state where you can travel back home, there's really no incentive to use leave ever unless you wanna waste it for some reason because you could drive up home on the weekends. If you are stuck picking between a shore duty command like Virginia and you're from Illinois, you might as well pick Great Lakes because while you're there, you can one, visit family, two, save up leave the entire time because you're not gonna to need to take leave to go visit your family, which means that your next duty station, if you have a higher probability of getting an overseas billet, then you can use all that accumulated leave to see the Thai boys, that's right. <laughs> There's also other miscellaneous uh, activities you can go to. Uh, one of the units you wanna look out for uh, specifically is deploying units. Now, some of you be like, oh, I don't wanna deploy. If you go to an operational command that IA billets outwards, for instance, uh, before my last deployment, there was this short SP MAGTAF that had like a, a billet they needed a corpsman for. It wasn't, they didn't, it wasn't like an original unit. SP MAGTAFs are kind of like IA'd from all over the place, right? Individual augmentee, just imagine getting picked up one place and getting put in another. Because I was at this operational command, <clears throat> and you know, I'm always volunteering for stuff, there's an SP MAGTAF to Dubai. If you guys know what that is, it's in United Arab Emirates. <laughs> it's where you see Ferraris as cop cars, and it kind of looks like Las Vegas, like, I don't know, nicer? <laughs> Anyway, we were there for like a month. I stayed in a five-star hotel. This counted as a SP MACTAF deployment, quote unquote, not really. I, I never tell people it's a deployment. It's technically a deployment, <laughs> but I don't tell people that because it's just like, no one's gonna count it as a deployment. However, this was free vacation for pretty much a month. I did medical coverages during my shifts, which were only like eight to 12 hours. And the rest of the time, I had a five-star hotel with five-star gourmet meals in the hotel while overseas and it's a tax-free zone. So the entire time I am pocketing money, the military put me in United Arab Emirates and I'm just running around Dubai. I went uh, ATV sand duning, which is way cooler over there because they do not have restrictions like the US. They need to wear a helmet, um, like maxed out speeds on an ATV. It was insane. Sandboarding, camel riding, uh, the world's largest mall is over there. Uh, the Can't even think of the name, the world's largest tower. Went like go-kart racing. There's tons of things you could do in Dubai. And I went there for like a month and a half for free while making money because it was tax-free. I'm pretty sure I got separation allowance and all my meals and lodging and everything were paid for. So moral of the story is go to an operational command, volunteer for every IA billet they have because you'll mo more likely see a bunch of countries doing it that way. Hope you guys liked this video. If it was helpful, please leave a like down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to follow my Instagram. I need an ego boost. Go team.